Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. I got a super fun video today. So I have been rediscovering my Jeremy Scott Freddy's collection for a specific reason and actually one particular reason. I am a huge fan of the original 80s, late 80s, Mad Balls series. Uh, <laughs> here's an example. These are quite big. Kid Robot has been reproducing them. He's kind of, I mean, the brand has been bringing them back in a bigger form. They're like foam balls. But these are really like movie props. They're, they're incredible. Let's come in close. Um, this is how they come in packaged. This is Skull Face, by the way. Anyway, okay, we're going to get to this in detail through Jeremy Scott. So a couple of years back, my all-time favorite Jeremy Scott sneaker for Adidas came out. I died when I saw this announced. Here you go. I have them here. I wear them a lot. I actually have a pair just like conserved in the archive and a pair to wear. I want to show you how these look after they've been rocked. I did do a review of these uh, sneakers in the past, but um, let's show you the wear and tear. And also I'm going to go deep into these sneakers and what they mean and how they've been done and conceived. It's really, really fascinating. So let's get straight to it. This is a very incredible uh, way of producing a shoe because it's all leather and they added all of these slime bits. This is plastic that's been glued on. It's very, very thick, chunky plastic. And then you have, it's like kind of like a Frankenstein, it's like a zombie-esque looking skin or leather, the blue. And then it's all been stitched together like patchwork, even though it's one piece of leather, but there, there, have, there have been... Um, studied and calculated holes that have been kind of lasered through or pressed through the entire leather and then a leather lace uh, like a shoelace but it's not and I don't know where it ends really I haven't found yet where it ends and where it begins has been kind of laced through by hand through the entire shoe so all of these little bits that are white is actually a leather like a leather lace that's been painted in white it's incredible so much work went into it so you get this kind of Frankenstein-y effect now what is super fascinating, oh, by the way, so you might be asking yourself, why are they laced differently? Why do we see the tongue, the trefoil Adidas tongue coming out of this one? But here they've been laced up to the top. Now, I wear them laced up to the top. Some people like to wear them open up like that. This one on me looks better when it's all kind of sealed off. It just has better proportions. But on the tongue, on the inside, it says they, they were made in Indonesia. Um, they were produced in October 2014. And now we're in 2017. So they are three years old. And they're holding up pretty well to time. I just, I, I can't, I can't, they cannot degrade ever. I hope not. Even the shoelaces have been kind of painted to give them, to give them kind of a zombie-esque texture and structure. They have like these strokes of black all over them. Very mummy looking. Now, let me move to the side. And let's pop in the picture of the prototype. This shoe was supposed to be made like this. So that's why I have this ball. And when I found the mad ball, I was so excited because this is Slobulus. That's his name. Actually, yes, Slobulus. Slobulus or Slo no, Slobulus. Like a slob and bleh, you know, there's a lot of slime going all out of him. So he was supposed to be, a, this is really fascinating that Kid Robot chose this size, even though the original Mad Balls were much smaller, because this would have been the exact size, as you can see here, of the head on the top of the sneaker. Just like Jeremy Scott made the um, Mad Balls flying off, this was typical Mad Ball, uh, just like Jeremy Scott used to, um, you know, the famous teddy bear sneaker, which we can also blend in there for a second, or the panda or whatever. It had kind of a head on the tongue like that. Look how cool this shoe would have been had it had the head actually really put on there. Now, the reasons why, and let's try to do this properly. The reasons why this happened, why it did not go into production. I don't know, maybe they didn't have, maybe they didn't get all the rights. They wanted, it's so cool. Oh, I wish, I wish this one came out the way, like like this. Now, of course, the color, the choice of colors 
I mean, this guy is green. Slobulus is green. His skin texture is green. The shoe is blue. I prefer the shoe blue. Heck, I wouldn't even mind because the slime is all green. I wouldn't mind like a green head on a blue body. Even like this would have been really fantastic. I would have, I mean, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the geek kid in me just, I, I would live for this stuff. Anyway, either timing, budgeting, whatever be the case, something happened and it did not end up being the way, you know, it didn't end up being produced the way it's produced, the, the way it's produced now, which is more simplified. Maybe they thought they're going to sell more this way. And then it was only released in Asia and some special stores in Europe. And then it came really late, almost half a year later to America. A very, very strange release for this shoe. Uh, the order sheets um, of this shoe, uh, if I manage to find it, I'll blend it in here. You can see that the shoe was, if I don't manage to find it, oh well, but if I do manage to find it, you're going to see that the shoe has like a, how it was conceived as a drawing design. It was supposed to have the head kind of cut in half and attached to the tongue. And then there's another version with the round head attached to the tongue, like the teddy bear heads. Super fascinating. Now, what is also very exciting to me is the fact that the, um, well, Jeremy Scott did a whole collection with Mad Balls. Now, we know that there was issues with another artist that Jeremy did not really ask for permission. And there's there was like a whole collection with designs inspired directly by the street artists from the 80s. Um, Jeremy had to take back the entire collection because the artist, uh, you know, filed a lawsuit. Um, there was a Longchamp bag that was incredible with this monster. Actually, the... Um, monster depicted on the Longchamp Le Pliage bag was kind of reminiscent of Slobulus, but different. Um, Slobulus did end up on Jeremy Scott's knit sweaters afterwards. Uh, but what is really fascinating also to see, oh, let me move to the side again, the two Le Pliage Longchamp Mad Balls bags. One of, I always forget their names, I have them here though. Uh, one is of Screamin' Mimi. And the other one is of the very, very famous Skull Face. Also incredible pieces. This is like one of my kind of like pop referential Jeremy Scott pieces that I love the most. Uh, you know, he didn't really transform them much, but he just used these pop icons of the 80s uh, uh, on, on garments. I mean, oh, I love the sneakers so, so, so much. Now, what is really fascinating, uh, Kid Robot brought back uh, the Mad Balls as of 2016-17. But then, what is super fascinating, Just Play brought them back really as toys for kids. Now, these are the mini versions. They also have the bigger ones for that, that retail for like $9.99. These are around like Toys R Us $2.99, the blind bags. But there are secrets to know what, which one of the 13 balls is in here. Um, so you don't have to buy doubles. But anyway, um, I'm showing this guy this is the mo the modern version of Slobulus. He's a tiny little guy. I'm going to show you them side by side, kind of. I don't have the 80s version, though. But it's so fascinating that actually they're back in so with so many different brands and under so many different kind of designs. I mean, this, this guy's the best, for sure. But this guy's pretty amazing, too. Let me move to the side again, and let's zoom in a picture of them. This They're, they're just so incredible. Um, now... If I had the the right know-how, I would so like buy more of these multiples and find a freaking way to attach it to the to the shoe. I mean you would have to kind of I guess you would have to cut this one in half and find a way to glue him with some sort of slime. But damn that's a that's a fabulous shoe. And I think like that's how they did the prototypes too, you know. They just kind of glued something that they produced manually maybe even, you know, for the prototypes. But look how cool this shoe would have been had it really gone into production this way. I don't know. I just love pop reference like this. And hey, a toy with slime and so much character, I'm in. Hornhead is amazing too. Like a purple version. So you could maybe, oh my god, to make them even like detachable. Like, you could choose which one to attach to the tongue of the sneaker. Hell yeah. <sighs> oh, sorry. I'm covering the mic now, guys. Look at that. Oh, 
Okay, whatever. This is just like the you can. I love this stuff. And yes, you can match this up with anything. You could wear a freaking Chanel bag with this. You know what I mean? Anything you want. It's just. You just got to have the spirit, you know, to laugh about it. It's so amazing. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to share with you kind of this tidbit of design and fashion history, you know, because it's already three years old, this shoe, the design and the concept are even older than that. They're around four years old. Mad Balls are from the 80s. Jeremy Scott kind of tried to, to bring them back and unite them all, in, all into one. Uh, this shoe did not have so much success, so... It, it it wasn't like it was sold out across the globe, you know, it, it came, it was announced and then it came out very, very late after it was announced. A lot of people kind of had given up uh, by then on this shoe, but uh, not me. And, and I still, you know, if there's one Jeremy Scott shoe that I kind of get back at or two and, and wear with a lot of love, it's this one together with the Jeremy Scott Mickey Mouse uh, sneaker, which we can also zoom in quickly here. That's Mickey. And back again to the center. Oh my God, this video has been like so educational as far as slime and pop culture is concerned. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you are also, you know, uh, somewhere near a Toys R Us or a Target, sometimes maybe even in Walmart, you could find these little fellas and they're like so squishy and soft and like stress relievers. And they're so ghoulishly cute you just gotta love the guys anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you like this video and jeremy we all love you um if you have liked this video uh please do thumb it up and if you haven't yet but do wish to subscribe to my channel here on youtube i'm also on instagram facebook and twitter so guys no matter how much slime is thrown at us we never give up on love love you see you soon take care bye